Hello and welcome to the March 13th, 2022 edition of Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online virtual worship. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come before you grateful for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We are mindful of many people around the world that are suffering greatly right now, especially the people of Ukraine who are being attacked constantly, viciously, and horribly. Lord, we pray for them and pray for your peace to be made known in the midst of that terrible place. Lord, I pray for those still struggling with the pandemic around the world, those who are not yet even able to get vaccinated. And I, I pray, Lord, that we might see an end to that terrible scourge soon. Lord, I pray for those who are suffering financially, emotionally, physically, dealing with illness and sickness and injury. And Lord, that you would make your spirit known amongst us. Bless us, Lord. Heal us as only you can. Speak to our hearts now, Lord Jesus. Let us hear you and know you and love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're continuing our look at the roots of faith, I believe. And today, I'm calling this message, I believe in the church. Now, the word church is in some ways almost a made up created word by the church. Uh, in Greek, the word that was used was the word ekklesia. In Hebrew, that the same word or the word that would have meant the same thing was kahal. Both mean the called out ones, the assembly, the congregation. And it was a word that could have many different contexts, not simply referring to what we think of when we think of the church. Um, and yet church is as good a word as any for us to use because it is a unique organization, even though this ecclesia might be used in other contexts. We l l see a lot about the word ecclesia, the called out ones, the church, in the book of Acts. I'm going to share a short video with you that will tell you a little bit more about that. So this word, ecclesia, the church, in the Nicene Creed, it refers to it, I believe, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. By the way, when it uses the word Catholic, especially in that lowercase c like that, this is not referring to the Roman Catholic Church. That word Catholic simply means universal. It means the, the church of all believers at all times and in all places. Uh, so it is certainly a, a creed that we could even say today. Uh, in the Apostles' Creed, it says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints. Once again, you'll note the lowercase c, meaning the universal church. Uh, this is, of course, from the Apostles' Creed. And then from an edited version of the 1963 Baptist Faith and Message, and this is my edition, the New Testament Church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a local body of baptized believers who are associated by covenant in the faith and fellowship of the gospel, observing the acts of baptism and the Lord's Supper instituted by Christ, committed to his teachings, exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word, and seeking to extend the gospel to the ends of the earth. This church is an autonomous body operating through democratic processes under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In such a congregation, members are equally responsible. 
The New Testament speaks also of the church as the body of Christ, which includes all of the redeemed of all of the ages. And this is from the 1963 Baptist Faith and Message, as I have edited it with some small changes. Uh, this, this ecclesia, this church, this congregation, this gathering is something that matters. It is something that is important. It is not something that is an afterthought. It is something that was started by Jesus Christ. And we know some things about it. First of all, Christ loves the church. In Ephesians 5, uh, verses 25 through 32, we read, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. You see... Jesus Christ is not ambivalent towards the church. He is not neutral towards the church. He actively loves the church and cares for the church. He deeply, deeply is committed to the church. His bride, as it is referred to in the book of Revelations. It is also the body of Christ. In Romans 12, verses 3 through 5, we read, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and, those member, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. You see, we, we are a part of the body of Christ. We use the term members in speaking of a church. I am a member of this church, or I'm a member of that church. Sometimes meaning that our name is on a roll, or we associate with that church. But you see, that is not really how Paul used this word. When Paul refers to us as members. He means as members of the body, as physical parts of the body. We are each one a, a, a different part of the body of Christ. Together, we make up his earthly body. And the body is made out of many. And out of that many comes one. You've seen this term, a pluribus unum on a, a, a money before, I have no doubt. It means out of many, one. And that's exactly what the church of Jesus Christ is. <clears throat> Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is made up of, is not made up of one part, but of many. This is 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14. We are, we are the disparate, different parts of the body. And what my part to perform is, is not the same as what your part to perform is or what someone else's part. But you see, it is essential that we are all united as one body so that we can do the work of Christ. This actually goes for the many different churches that meet all over. There are many of us scattered around the world. And yet together, we form the body of Christ, working together, to do 
the work of Christ, to perform the ministry Christ instituted for all of us. So we have become one body, though we are many members and many different roles, and yet still one body. Uh, I want to show you a video here that kind of shows the fact that even though we are different, that we belong together. Because we do. <laughs> <laughs> We belong together. We cannot function properly, separated from one another. In uh, Romans, Paul writes, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In accordance with the faith, God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same functions, so in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Romans 12, 3 through 5. Um, imagine, if you will, the absurdity of a tooth trying to do the work of an eye, or of your foot trying to do the thinking for your brain, or of your uh, fingernails, trying to pump blood like your heart. I mean, it's ridiculous. It can't be done. Each of us has different gifts and different roles to play. But we all work together with our different functions to form one body. Just as the parts of our own body work together to form one body. And so in Hebrews 10, we read, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, verses 23 through 25. You see, it is together that we truly become the body of Christ. It is quite possible, yes, to be a Christian separated from all other Christians, but you'll never be able to reach the full potential of ministry that you will have when you're united with brothers and sisters together to perform the work of the body. We belong together. This is the ecclesia. This is the called out ones. This is the church that Jesus died for. This is the church that Jesus welcomes back as his bride in the last days. This is his church of which we are blessed to be called members. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, how we love you, how we praise you, how we thank you for your enormous love for us, for making us a part of your body, for trusting us with the word of grace and truth and mercy of the gospel so that we might continue your work here on earth as your hands, as your feet, as your voices, as your eyes and ears. 
Lord, we love you and praise you and pray that you would go before us and join us together at all times. This we pray in the precious and holy name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace and may God bless you.